Trump, because uh, he did say he's open to being speaker. He technically could be speaker, um, I guess. I mean, you were reading this morning an article that says... Yeah, there, you guys have a rule that if somebody's facing felony... Uh, indictments. Indictments, uh, where they could go away for more than two years, they can't do that. And, of course, he's got all sorts of legal peril. You would have to change the rule. You'd have to change the rule. And he posted a picture. Of, it was Donald Trump with a gavel. This is what he said yesterday. Uh, Brian was watching it. He said it was funny because the reporters were asking him questions about what's happening in the courtroom. And then as he's walking away, someone asks him a question about, would you want to be speaker? And he turns around and he answers the question. I think we have a sound bite. Uh, a lot of people have been calling me about speaker. All I can say is we'll do whatever's best for the country and for the Republican Party. Would you take the job? A lot of people have asked me about it. I'm focused. You know, we're leading. I don't know you. I'm sure you don't read too much. The papers, but the leading by like 50 points for president. You know, my focus is totally on that. If I can help them during the process, I would do it. My, my focus is on being president, but if they need help with this process, I would do yeah. it. And then we'll show you the picture that he posted with the gavel. What's yeah. your What's your reaction? I think President Trump wants to be president of the United States. That's what I want. I think he's the best president we've had, certainly in my lifetime. Did more what he said he would do than any president I can remember. I want him to be president of the United States. I think that's what he wants to do. Um, and I think that's, I think that's what's going to happen because the country is so fed up with the policies of Joe Biden. I think President Trump is going to be our nominee. He's winning by, I don't know, 40, 50 points. And I think he's going to be our next president. He's beaten Joe Biden, in, and I think even an ABC poll like a week ago by 10, 11 points. So uh, the country knows his policies worked. I think he wants to be president. I want him to be president. Will Donald Trump become the next House Speaker? How many Republicans would vote for Trump if his name were brought up? And interestingly enough, Fox News actually brought up a pretty good point that if Donald Trump were nominated to be the next House Speaker, if his name was brought up, all 213 Democrats might just vote for him. And in that case, if they did all vote for him, then we would only need a few Republicans to get on board to get to the 218 votes that they would need just to pretty much ensue even more chaos. Watch. You, you also know that the White House and the DNC tweeting out all sorts of stuff about the chaos on the Republican side. The Democrats, and you know this, the Democrats would love it if somebody introduced into nomination Donald Trump because Donald Trump could probably get every single Democrat to vote for him to continue the chaos, and he'd only need five or six Republicans. Next, on, next thing you know, he's got the hammer. They would be on record for voting for Donald Trump, the they, Democrats. And they would <laughs> love it because the chaos would continue, they say. Yeah, we, we, need, uh, we need to come together as a conference, as I said, because right now the country, the crime problem, we did a field hearing in Chicago, the crime problem is so severe, the immigration border security problem is so severe, the inflation is so severe, let's come together as Republicans and address what the American people want us to address. Now, realistically speaking, we're probably only looking at one or two people. We're looking at either Jim Jordan or Steve Scalise. Now, next week on Wednesday, the House Republicans are going to be holding a closed door election where they're going to be voting on all these different candidates to see who is leading and kind of get the general consensus on who they should be voting for. And then from there, really who knows what's going to happen because the last election for the House Speaker, it took Kevin McCarthy 15 rounds to be elected. So will Jim Jordan or Steve Scalise also take 15 rounds? Will this one take even more than 15 rounds Nobody really knows, but Jim Jordan, if it matters at all, did get Donald Trump's endorsement. So if Donald Trump weighs heavy on the Republican Party, then Jim Jordan might just be their guy. 
but again, we'll just have to wait and see. Of course, at this point, if the next House Speaker has to have the same rules in place that McCarthy did, that they could pretty much be voted to be vacated from their role as Speaker the first time they do something that maybe someone doesn't like, then I'm not sure if they will or really quite frankly should take the job. But regardless, here is Jim Jordan making his case on why he should become the next House Speaker. Watch. You were, you were on the fence the night of the ouster. What changed your mind to say, I, I want to be Speaker? You need someone who can unite the conference and I think just as importantly unite the conservative and Republican movement across this country. Uh, that's what I think I can do. That's why I'm running for the job. I like the job I had. Uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Chairman of the Select Committee on the Weaponization of Government doing the work there. But I do think we have to have someone who can bring our team together. I think I'm best equipped to do that. The eight people who voted in a way that I, I disagreed with, yeah. we got to bring them into the fold. I think I'm best equipped to do that so that we can then go do the things we told the American people we would do for for them. And the first thing I would focus on, the very first thing I would focus on is one sentence, no money can be used to process or release into this country any new migrants. You have to change the equation. You have to stop what's going on there in Texas and across our country. That is the first bill we should do. Attach that to a spending bill and get that done for the America. And everyone knows this is the central issue. Eric Adams, the mayor of New York, is in Latin America as we speak because this problem is so big. We need to address that. We need to get the Democrats on board to do what their constituents want them to do as well. You shouldn't be penalized for the good job that you did on judiciary because people, Americans, the Republicans love to see what you're doing to go after the Biden family and get to the bottom of, of what they have done with their taxes, if they've done anything wrong, if it was pay for play and all of that kind of thing. But if you do leave, if you become speaker and you have to leave judiciary, what will happen to that committee now? Will those investigations still continue? They sure will. We've, we, we've been working with the Speaker's office all along. Many times you have to consult House counsel when you're doing all these depositions, all these subpoenas that get sent out. So we, we've had that already happen. If, in fact, I get the privilege of being the next Speaker of the House, we will continue to work with the team on judiciary and oversight and ways and means as we do our investigative work, as we do our constitutional duty of oversight of the executive branch, that will continue. In fact, I was in a deposition, I was in a deposition two days ago with the U.S. Attorney from the District of Columbia, Matthew Graves, who declined to partner with David Weiss. I was in that deposition when all this was happening here uh, in the House. So yes, that, that has to continue because that's our job. Uh, you know, Mr. Jordan, that uh, moderates have said, they've been very vocal, they will not vote for anybody unless they change that rule on one vote can get somebody uh, vacated from the seat, which is essentially how the uh, capital coup happened the other day. So moderates want to change the rules, but for conservatives, that is a deal breaker. So, and there is, I was reading this morning in Axios, I believe, there is, uh, expectations are at rock bottom that the civil war between the many factions of the Republican Party can be fixed by next week. Well, we have to fix it. And I said this on the House floor on January 3rd when I nominated Speaker McCarthy. I said it a couple days ago. Any differences that exist in the Republican Party pale pale in comparison to the differences between us and the radical left, which now unfortunately controls the Democrat Party. We had better stick together. We had better come together to fight for the things that make our country the greatest nation ever and the things the American people elected us to do. Again, I think I, I can do that. If, that. if the conference wants that rule changed, I'm not, if I'm speaker, I'm not going to go to Democrats to get that done. No, no way. We will have to decide as 222 Republicans, are we going to change that? That's the only way it gets done if that's what the conference wants. Mm -hmm. So that's something that has to, again, you have to bring the team together. That's what we have to focus on so that we can help the American people and do what we said we were going to do.